Welcome along to the SUTV post-game show where we're looking back on a pulsating afternoon at Bramall Lane. It finished on as even, Sheffield United 3, Fulham 3, um, but this man on my left, Ollie McBurney, it's probably tinged, I'd guess, with a lot of disappointment given that with 10 minutes to go, you've got a 3-1 advantage, and but for VAR, it would have been 4. Yeah, it feels like we were 4-1 up and somehow we drew 3 all, so it's a, it's a weird feeling, but no, I think... The boys are disappointed in there. It feels like we should have won the game. You know, I thought the boys, second half, I thought we were excellent and just shows when we're at it and how, play how we want us to play and the gaffer how he wants us to play. You know, we can compete with, with the best teams. They've been in a great run of form. You know, we know how good some of their players are. And, you know, I think second half we showed we can compete. Just that final killer instinct. So it, it does feel a little bit deflating, but I'm sure when we look back on it through the week, there's definitely going to be some positives we can take out. This place loved it at the end, a standing ovation to every man, woman and child to you guys walking off the pitch. And that was despite the, the way it finished. It just gave us a flavour of what this place can be like again, can't it? Yeah, I thought the fans were excellent. You know, even the first half, they were right behind us. Uh, you know, it's not easy, you know, we've not, we've not been anywhere near the levels we want to be at home recently in particular. And for them to come out and, and be with us for the whole 90 minutes, you know, I've, t I've said it a million times before how much of an edge it gives me personally and, and, and I know so many of the boys in the in the change room exactly the same. So, you know, we just thanked them and we're just gutted we couldn't get the three points from, but, you know, hopefully they can be proud of that second half performance. What an assist, Ollie. Uh, that <laughs> ball, yeah, because it looked like it. they, they backed off. They thought, oh, well, he's going to cut it back. And you with the outside of your right foot. That yeah, who was... needs a left foot, hey? <laughs> yeah, well, I say, I definitely won't come in with a left foot. So. <laughs> Um, nah, I've seen Brio, he's made a great run at the back stick and it's something that we'd worked on, you know, they were vulnerable at the back stick, they overloaded the, the middle of the goal and the back stick was free, so it was something that we'd worked on all week, so yeah, he's made a great run, I've managed to pick him out with a great ball and then he's returned the favour afterwards. Well, yeah, but a few minutes before your, your first, well, your goal, mm. um, he's gone down the right here and he's looked to cut back and I'm going, oh, he should have gone alone, next time he's gone, You've pulled into the perfect position. You left the two centre halves, and the, what? How, how how were you concentrating on that? Because it took a bubble. <laughs> you, know the, you know them ones, yeah, the ones that look easy, but they're the hardest ones some of the time. But now nah, I think me, me and Brio have got a great understanding. You know, it's probably only the second time we've properly played together, and you know we've we've trained together a little bit. But the more we play together, it, you know, we really enjoy playing with each other. We kind of know what each other is similar. I know he's a different player to Willie, but similar in terms of the way that straight away we clicked in terms of what, what we knew what each other wanted to do, so I really enjoyed playing with Brill. Uh, one other thing, there was a ball bouncing there, we are 3-1 up, and you could have launched yourself, there's a bit yeah, of you know, yeah. restraint there. Yeah. So. I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to get another sending off, I, I don't think the gaffer would be too pleased. I mean, you know, the gaffer speaks a lot about winning our battles and the aggression, but doing it in the right way and not... Um, not getting sent off, but uh, yeah, like I said, I mentioned I had an interview this week. My little brother got diagnosed with, with cancer a month and a half ago, so you know it makes puts everything into perspective a little bit. So for me, you know, seeing coming out here is, is we got the best job in the world. You know, you think it's hard, we're at the bottom of the league, but you know he does chemo every Friday, and that's hard. This isn't hard, you know. So that that goal was for him today. So yeah, I guess that really does put everything um, into context. Uh, and uh, like you say, when when you you put all the pressure, the external noises that come out, and you're dealing with issues like that as well. How does that help you rationalise things in your head, and how does it help you with your teammates? Definitely, like I say, it just puts a lot of things into perspective. You know, you can come after after a game, and you know what it's like. It's the worst thing in the world. You know, you, you get in some of these defeats, and you think the world. You want the world to swallow you up. You think it's the end of the world, but little things like that will will put things really into perspective for you and show there's a lot there's a lot more things. Of course, it still hurts, but it's a little bit easier for me to. to you know, football football's where is where I distract myself. I need football to to get away from things like that. You know, it's where it's my happy place, and he's the strongest kid I know. So, you know, to see him to see him fighting, why, why wouldn't I fight on the pitch? You know what I mean? How much will he have enjoyed seeing you score then today? Yeah, he was up there. He was up there today. He was up there. So I I think he'd have been raging at me for the, for not scoring the second <laughs> one. But uh, yeah, no, he'd have been happy with that one. I'm sure. Hey, and coming back to football as well. I, the game's come thick and fast now. It's Anfield, of course, on, yeah. on Thursday night. Don't get any easier. It don't, it don't, but this is what, like I say, it's what we live for. It's why we're in the best league in the world. It's, it's why we why we were so, worked so hard last year. You know, we could have chucked it in all them times. People thought we were going to chuck it in and stayed in the championship and had an easy life. We don't want to do that. We want to be we want to be playing against the best teams so in the world. And What is it now? What is it? Uh, ice baths and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. are in, the legs? We're How in tomorrow. Yeah, no, You're not 22 anymore. No, nah, really? definitely <laughs> not 22 anymore. So, were you stretching with Yeah, a tiny just... little bit of cramp just okay. when, we're, when I'm jumping up for the balls, but I'll be fine. We're in tomorrow, so just recovery tomorrow. Uh, get ready to go again Thursday like I say it's, it's kind of, everything we've done has kind of made me 
enjoy it again, have that enjoyment of going into these battles and, you know, what is there to fear, you know? There's, there's no pressure, like, go and enjoy playing at these bigger stadiums and, you know, m upset a few people and make, you know, everyone thinks we're the worst team in Premier League history, so show that we're not that, do you know what I mean? Well, listen, Oli, thanks for your time today. We Super. really enjoyed seeing you today. Um, great goal as well. You get back inside now. Right. We'll catch you later. Um, Oli McBurney joining us on SUTV and the post-game show. Carl, um, listening to, to Oli as well, obviously he's put things into context with, with um, things going on um, in his family life as well. But altogether, he's a more rounded individual. He's a leader on the pitch. And when he's playing like we saw this afternoon, he's a difficult proposition for defenders. Yeah, and, you know, he's got a great advisor in Jack Lester. You know, he said he, he spoke to Jack Lester at halftime who said that him and Brierton Diaz were a little bit too far apart and to get a bit closer. And they got their rewards. He loves playing with Ben. ben they play well, you know, and they were a real handful. When we saw them on, this, on the, the team sheet, we were excited. You know, we used to seeing Ben out wide coming in. He played well as a target man and, and they got better and better as the game went on. Nine games left to go in the season as well. If those two can play like that and dovetail off each other and that chemistry gets better, that, that's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, and, but that's the thing the manager's been talking about. We need minutes from yeah. the players. You know, if you get 30, 30 games from McBurney, you know, you're going to do really you're much better because we've missed him when he's not playing. So I'm glad to see he's, you know, he's not carrying anything going to uh, you know, manage the, the next couple of days so he's fit for Thursday and see, see how we go. But really good performance from the team and himself. And you know you just wish him and his family all the best with his, his younger brother. We absolutely do. And that's a sentiment shared by everybody at Sheffield United. Carlos Sabo, as always, thanks for your time here at Bramall Lane this afternoon. It wasn't to be in the end, but it was a performance that has certainly inspired plenty of hope as we enter the final running for the season. Three all, it's finished at Bramall Lane on as even.